Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Now one thing I would highly recommend is the Dexter hub and drum assembly. The way all of your components are gonna be brand new. Now it's especially important since these are electric brakes and they use magnets, that that surface that that magnet is connecting to more or less is going to be clean and even. That way they can kind of mate together over time and you'll get the full benefit and power from your brakes. And right here we have a side-by-side -side comparison with our new trailer brakes and our original ones. Now right off the bat, you're going to be able to tell the difference. Our new one is going to have an e-coating, which is really going to help protect it from all of the elements and help keep it looking good. And over here on our old one, you can just tell from the way it looks that it's seen better days. Our pads are going to be made from an automotive grade friction material and they're gonna be fully bonded to our shoe. That's gonna increase our lifespan and provide us with more braking torque. Since the edges are tapered, that's gonna to lead to less of a chance of cracking and crumbling that can severely affect our stopping power. The old pad that we pulled off, as you can see here, lacks that tapered edge, and well, you can see what happened. Now one of the biggest issues when it comes to trailer maintenance is people are unsure when they need it, or if it's even been done. In this case, our customer almost waited too long to change your brakes, and that could be a very bad thing, because obviously you need to stop when you're going down the road. Well, with this setup, that's going to allow you to do that safely and properly, and that's what's gonna give you that peace of mind, knowing your rig is set up properly as you hit the brakes. To begin our installation, we're first going to have to remove our wheel. And to do that, I'm just going to take an impact or you can even use a large wrench and remove all of our lug nuts. And once you have them all removed, you can just grab our tire, pull it off and set it off to the side. Now we're going to pull off the cap that is covering our axle nut underneath. So to do that, take a flathead screwdriver and actually kind of work it behind that lip. Then just tap it a few times with the hammer. Kind of pry it. You might have to spin it a little bit and kind of work it around. Then it'll just pop out and we can set it off to the side. Now what I like to do is just take some towels and wipe everything clean. That way it's a little easier to work with and we can see what we're doing. Now we need to remove our axle nut. But if you try to spin it, it'll only move a little bit. And that's because in one of these openings, there's actually going to be a tab that's going to keep that nut from spinning. So what we have to do is push that up and release it. The tab's actually right here. Let's take a flathead. We kind of push it flat against our spindle. Now we should be able to take a pair of pliers and spin that nut off. It shouldn't be on there that tight. Once you kind of break it free, just use your hand to finish it off. We'll set our axle nut off to the side, and then we can start to pull out some of the hardware. Might have to take a screwdriver and kind of help work it out. But this is what I was talking about, the little keeper. So when this is in there and the nut's on, one of these tabs will be bent down and that'll prevent that nut from spinning. Now you don't want to lose any of this hardware that we're taking off, by the way. And we can kind of grab our assembly, pull it forward a little bit. Take off our washer and pull our front bearing out. Now before we can completely pull our hub assembly off, we're going to have to cut the wires that are connecting to it. Let's come behind it. Use a pair of snips to get them cut. And we can grab it. Pull it towards yourself and set it off to the side. At this point, we can work on removing our brake assembly. 
Now what I like to do is just take a paper towel and put it over our spindle to help prevent any damage. And that way we just don't get grease everywhere while we're working. Now it's gonna be held in place by five nuts that are just like that. So I recommend using some penetrating oil, just kind of spray them down, make it a little easier. We're gonna grab our wrench and remove those five nuts. Once we have them all off, we can remove the lock washers that sit behind the nuts. And then grab it and carefully slide it off. And do your best not to hit the spindle, that way we don't damage it. Now we can put on our new brake assembly the same way that we removed the original one. Slide it over, line all of our holes up, and then secure it with the fasteners that we just removed. With everything hand tight, now use a wrench to tighten it all down. I actually like to snug these down in a star pattern and that'll just help pull this assembly down flush. Now we can hook up our wires out of the brake to the wiring coming from the trailer. So I'll strip these back a little bit. And I like to use just a little bit of dielectric grease to help keep them protected from any corrosion or anything like that. And then I'm going to use heat shrink buck connectors and slide it over the wire and crimp it down. And the same thing for this wire. Now we can grab our trailer wiring and get that insulation peeled back a little bit and connect them to our new wires. Now it doesn't matter which wire goes to which, as long as they're both connected properly. So I went ahead and used a heat source to shrink my butt connectors. Now I'm just gonna take some electrical tape and wrap them up just to give them that extra step of protection. Now we come back to the outside. We'll take our towel off our spindle just kind of wipe it down and clean it up, get all that old grease off there. Now we're gonna to need to adjust our brake shoes in a little bit to make them smaller. That way our drum is gonna be able to fit over it without any issues. We're gonna use this small pry bar to spin that. Now you don't have to have one of these, you can use a flathead screwdriver as well. This just makes it a little easier. Now we're gonna spin it to the right. A handful of turns and that'll pull them drums in closer together and make the overall diameter smaller. Now I went ahead and put some new grease on our spindle. Now we can slide our drum and hub assembly on. Just kind of work it back. Push on that front bearing lined up with the spindle. Just kind of wiggle it around. Make sure it's on there straight like that. Put on our flat washer. As you can see it is notched on one side so it can only go on one way. Put on our retaining keeper. And find the R nut. I'm gonna run that down by hand and then we can tighten it. Now you don't need to barrel down on this, you just want to snug it up and make sure that your whole assembly can spin with some resistance. You're also going to want to grab it on each side 
kind of push it front to back and make sure there isn't any play in it. Once that feels about perfect, once you have that set, we can bend our keeper down. I will have to move it a little bit, that way that keeper can slide into the opening. Let's take a flathead. Kind of bend it down and give it one last spin. Now we can put our cap on. This will line it up. Gonna use our palm to get it started. Just take a hammer and lightly tap it. And if it's fighting you a little bit, you can take a block of wood and that'll help push it down evenly. That way you don't ding or dent your cap. Now what I'm gonna do at this point is remove our rubber plug and put some grease into that greaser. Let's give it a handful of pumps to ensure everything is properly lubricated. And when that's done, just put our rubber plug back in place. Now we can put our wheel and tire back on. That way we can adjust our brakes. To adjust our brake, we're going to want to come underneath the trailer and remove our cap. And then we're actually going to use our tool to spin our wheel this way inside. And what we're trying to do is tighten that brake up until we can no longer spin our wheel by hand. So every few turns, just spin your tire and see if it will stop. So about right there, it's very difficult to spin. When we get to that point, we can back it off. And what we're looking for is a little bit of resistance and we don't want the tire to free spin forever and ever. We want it to turn maybe a couple times before uh, the resistance of our brakes will make it come to a stop. You will hear a little bit of noise like that and that's normal. Uh, until we kind of start using our brakes. The noise will go away. So about like that is where we want it. You have it done. Don't forget to put your cat back in to help keep everything clean inside. Now to do the other side, you're just gonna repeat that same process. Now something I do just wanna point out and make sure you're doing properly is that the brake assemblies are actually side specific with left and right, so just make sure you're getting the correct one.